right, how's that? That should be, ooh, a little peaky. That should be much better. Thank you, Robbie. Um, my default mic got switched. Hopefully you can hear me now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so to reiterate what I said, uh, we are recreating this New York Times dialect quiz as a chat bot, basically. Oh, I heard you. There's, there's a little bit of a delay, but um, it, has been, it has been fixed, as you will see uh, in just a second. So what have we done so far? We're mostly done. We're really in the home stretch. Um, the, well, let's go through, let's go through and take the quiz and then you'll, um, see what the problem is. <laughs> so start a little thing. Uh, where can I move me where I'm not going to be an issue? I think over here is probably good. Uh, so we are using an action server uh, to uh, handle a lot of the business end of our assistant. Um, oh, right. I'm in the wrong directory. Let me fix that. And hopefully you too is caught up at this point uh, and you can hear that the sound is better. Hopefully. Uh, now we're on to run actions. Uh, so the action server, nope, I'm behind it. Hmm. You put me up here. There we go. That'll work for now. Uh, the action server can run pretty much any arbitrary code that your assistant needs to function. Um, our action server is doing a couple of things. So it has the form, the elicitation form that's taking all of our um, information and collecting it. And it's also uh, detecting the dialect of the speaker. So taking in the user's uh, responses, which are free form, we're doing some data validation and matching it to the closest multiple choice answer. And if there isn't one, we match it to other. Uh, and then taking that and encoding it using an encoder that we've trained previously, a label encoder, running it through an XGBoost model and uh, finally returning the results of that model. Uh, Gotham says, sounds good, fantastic. Thanks for letting me know. A little bit of coffee, a mm. little bit more coffee. Mm -mm -mm. All right, uh, haven't been sleeping super well lately, which I think I'm not alone in. <laughs> I think lots of people are having trouble sleeping right now. Uh, so that's what this uh, action server does. What the action server does not do is actually handle the um, um, business end of the assistant. I keep saying business end like that's meaningful. It's not. Uh, what it doesn't handle is the dialogue parts of the assistant. So um, we also need a Raza server. Um, dialogue, make sure I'm in the right directory. Um, we also need a Raza server that will um, uh, elicit the text from the user, wait for their response, take the response and parse it into meaningful information, um, select the correct next response or the most, most likely the best next response, uh, and then keep the conversation going that way. So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, Christian says, I love the tokenization. Please do more of those. Oh, thank you, Christian. Uh, right now, those are coming out every other Monday. So there won't be one next Monday, but there will be one the mon Monday after that. Um, and it's probably going to be on BERT, so spoiler alert, um, which I've gotten a lot of requests for. So what are we doing? What would we be doing? We're running our action server. Um, shell. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just running this server locally in the shell um, on localhost. And I need to, I still need to go back and fix that because there's a thing with localhost and Raza that it's a little bit slow. Uh, Da, 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 da. Oh yeah, I need to uh, uh, update some stuff as well. But we'll, I'm still working on getting this working. Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. I would love to take a dialect quiz. Let's say pill bug. So um, this so far is actually working. It's actually taking our answers and then doing data validation, uh, soda. Uh, and if I misspell some things, hopefully you should see that they are mapped to the correct answer once we finish the quiz. There's 19 questions in this quiz. I'd say y'all, actually I don't need the apostrophe because that should be um, caught by edit distance. Uh, and 
uh, no, <laughs> I don't do them. I do not say those the same. Caught and caught. Um, the uh, problem comes during the dialect classification, and I suspect based on the error we got last time, and I'm gonna try to see if I can replicate that error. I would say crawfish. Do I say crayfish or crawfish? Crayfish boy or crawfish? Crayfish. They both sound good. Um. Yeah. So I suspect. No word for this. Uh that the problem is actually with the original label encoder that we trained in a different notebook. Because I don't have, I do have the training data used for the original quiz. I don't have permission to share that training data. Um, so I've been doing my machine learning part of this separately. So training the, uh, and I believe this is the one where we ran into trouble. It was this token access road here. Um, and I believe where we ran into trouble was we had a class in our data validation that the label encoder had not encountered previously, and we got an error due to that uh, tennis shoes. Do, do, do. Uh, but as you can see, this is working. It's going through, it's asking us all the questions. Uh, the asking the questions and making sure that all of our slots are filled is handled by the form. So I don't actually have a story here that's I don't actually have a story here that's every question in order. Um, that's handled by this form um, action that we are running in a separate action server. Uh, what was the question? Uh oh. There we go. Uh, yard sale. Uh, and you, as you can see, even though we had like a couple of blank inputs, the form will uh, be like, oh, you're still looking, you have slots that haven't been filled. So we're gonna keep asking questions until we fill all the slots, uh, which is good because we need all of the slots in order to run our classifier. Hello, mm, that's unpronounceable. Drew, <laughs> I'm gonna guess. Um, I can say either, but I probably would say frosting more often. Lawyer, lawyer. <laughs> uh, Robbie says NLP is boring than vision. Ah, so I find vision more boring than NLP, so. Uh, kitty corner. Uh, and I did, yeah, that's what I, that's what I had to say with that. I prefer fireflies. Uh, I prefer NLP. I think language is a rich, interesting system that we, just like as humans and researchers, still don't understand fully. Um, Verge. And I'm uh, a big fan of it. I also have, what, three degrees in linguistics, so clearly I'm pretty committed to, uh, to that brew through. Okay. I believe that's the last question. So now we should see the values for each of our slots, which I will remove. Oh, sorry. This is the last question. Uh, we should see values for each of our slots. Uh, so even the ones that have been slightly misspelled will be mapped to something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is just um, white space that I haven't gone in and uh, uh, done. And here we're trying to run the detect dialect action and we've gotten an error. So I'm going to check out, um, yeah, okay, so it's access road again seems to be our problem. Um, so the problem is with our, our encoder, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, apply processor reduces input query to empty string. All comparisons will have score of zero, queried is none. Mm -hmm. Trying to unpickle Esta, blah, 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 version differences. Okay. Uh, at some point, I'm probably going to have to do a non pickled version of this estimator. Um, not the estimator, a non pickled version of the label encoder. Uh, Robbie says drone and automated cars are much more interesting. I oh, strongly disagree. <laughs> but again, that's like what's interesting is going to depend on you. Uh, Christian says, NLP is as interesting as CV. Uh, 
yeah, I think it's good that people are working on all the things and that uh, we all have space to do things that we find interesting. Abhishek says, what's the version of Rasa, Python, Pip, and Python to use entity extraction and with synonym? Um, so I would say probably the latest, uh, the latest version of Rasa is usually going to be the best um, because we are... Um, if you didn't know this about us, we have a research team that are constantly like adding new things. Like uh, the when we launched this, we saw something that said, "Hey, you should use Diet instead," which is uh, multitask learning that does information, sorry, intent identification and uh, entity extracting as the a single model rather than two separate models that are uh, then joined together later on. Um, so yeah, with synonyms, I'm not entirely sure what you mean by that. Uh, Abhishek says, which editor are you using, JupyterLab? No, this is VS Code. I am working on Windows um, and uh, I guess I, I use VS Code on a Mac too, so it's not just that it's Windows, but uh, I've had pretty good luck with it. All right, so we have a problem with our, hmm. Uh, we have a problem with one of our slots. So let's check out our actions file here. Um, so this is what's doing all of the form collecting and also all of the dialect detection. Uh, and I think our problem might even possibly be with this. So this is our... Um, uh, dictionary that we're using as a uh, uh, data validation database to select the correct answer or the closest answer because our original data set is multiple choice and we are now collecting data as uh, not multiple choice but rather free form so we need to handle that in some way and we're doing that using fuzzy matching and it looks like this one in particular is running into trouble so we know that it is validated correctly because the slot was set and if we look at the if we look at the slots here we can see that access road access road is set and also that it is access road in the uh, validation that's correct. So it's the encoder that's having the problem. Uh, uh, <laughs> Alvin says, you on the top of the screen is a bit odd. I'll move myself down. Whoop. There we go. Uh, I tried Raza 1.8, but didn't get proper solution in entity extraction. Um, yeah, I don't know what your specific problem is. I would ask in the forums, the Raza forums, uh, which I think are linked in the YouTube video description and uh, see if you can get a more exact answer uh, and you can share your, your Raza code there and talk about your specific problem. Uh, there's a major issue in Raza version. It should be on a website that Raza supports which version with which version of pip and Python as well. Uh, are you on Windows? Because some of the um, Python version stuff with Windows is due to binaries of specific libraries not being released for later versions of Pythons on Windows, um, which we, I, I would love to, to fix, but um, would I love to fix? No, <laughs> I would love to have that fixed. Um, but especially a lot of the TensorFlow stuff, I don't have the background to do. I mean, I guess I could. I don't know. It's just not my... Not my primary goal right now. Hello, Lion Coding. <sighs> All right, so let's go down and look at the... Mm. We should also have in here, in our question key, this should be an example of all of the questions. So let's see if we have not, it's possible that we've miscopied something at some point. Um, so we can double check that. So side road is the particular thing that we're looking for. A-C-C-E-S-S -S road, yes. Hmm. Is it? Hmm. 
Hmm. All right, I think we need to go take a look at the label encoder code. I think that will be more helpful. Um, it is possible that our encoder is looking for a space. Oh, these all have spaces. Do any of the rest of them have spaces? Um, so what I mean by that is if you look around the, uh, Okay, so there's no space in front of other, but there is a space in front of everything except service. Fronted, so service, access, feeder, gateway, we have them, and I've, I've got, I've got the, the worst. I've got the worst feeling that this is what the problem is. Uh, all right, let's try it again. Um, so the reason what I just did, uh, let's try stopping here real quick. Um, what I've just done is, oh, and I'm going to read to, oh, I don't know what I did. Uh, I'm going to need to restart the, um, action server as well. So I think what the problem might be is because we automated, um, taking this, data structure where all of the possible answers to a question are at the end of this file separated by semicolons, parse that into a list. It's possible that we didn't strip leading white space. Um, and I'm just really quickly looking through and seeing if any other one of these have leading white space. I don't think they do. Yeah, it's just that one. All right, so you can see all of these have a little white space in between the semicolon. Uh, if this is the problem, I'm gonna feel like a person who made a simple, avoidable, but understandable mistake. Uh, uh, Abhishek says, I'm using Ubuntu. Can I get Raza, can I use Raza interactive mode using the API? Uh, I'm not, mm, I'm not 100% sure what you're looking for, like the interactive learning in the command line? Is that what you're asking? Or are you trying to access that via an API? Um, yeah. Also, this may be a slightly better question for the, for the forum, because uh, I don't have my whole brain focused on one thing right now. What was I doing? Oh yeah. I was running the action server again. And we'll see, we'll see if this is the problem. Also the fact that we got the same problem both times, like it was the same row that had the problem, um, makes me think that it is possible that this is what it is. Uh, sure, all right, let's take this quiz one more time. Uh, I'm just gonna answer some random things. And that little bit of lag there um, is, again, due to using webhooks and not uh, an IP address, and I just have not gotten around to fixing it because I've been busy. Yeah. Uh, and the reason I'm trying to use the same answers every time is so that I can like consistently get the same bug. And once we have this working consistently, we can start using test cases as well, and that should uh, make our lives for testing a little bit easier. Different. Uh, the interactive mode helps a lot in training to improve accuracy in the command line interface. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's an API for that. No word for this. Crawfish. Crayfish? Crawfish. I say both of them, I think. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to do this exactly the same as I did, and hopefully this time we'll actually get a classification out. Um, and if we don't, then we know that there's another problem. So if the problem is, 
try to type and talk at the same time. So if the problem is that the there was like a single character mismatch, uh, then this should fix it. If the problem is that this is a class that was not seen in the original training data, then this should not fix it. Uh, and if that's the case, then we need to go back and redo our uh, label encoder, um, which to be fair, we do need to do anyway, because one of the questions that we're asking here, I just didn't include in the uh, in the classifier. Uh, it was the first question, what was the little like roly poly or um, what else did I call it? Roly poly, pill bug, sow bug, potato bug. It's like a little um, arthropod that lives under under rocks, an isopod, uh, lawyer boy. I don't know why I always have to say something there to figure it out. Uh, kitty corner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Christian says, is, Raza, is Gustav the Raza company pet? Nah, he's just my pet. Um, we do have uh, uh, a channel in our, in our work um, in discussion where people share pictures of their pets. So I've seen seen lots of people's pets, even though I don't really live that close to anyone. Um, so, no. I would say he's not the company pet, but uh, he is he's definitely uh, a good friend. As much as a hedgehog can be. Ugh, getting there. Foo -foo. <laughs> um, what I found. Oh, that's okay. It should it should be able to handle typos because of the fuzzy matching that we did. All right. Okay. So, uh, this was very fixable. It was a dumb thing, uh, and it's that I had to add additional white spaces. Um, and we fixed it and it works for a certain value of works. Um, so it says that I sound like I come from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Cleveland, Ohio, or Brooklyn, New York. And I don't know how familiar you are with the United States and the geography of the United States, um, but I'm from Virginia, which is in the Southeast. Um, all of these places are decidedly not in the Southeast. <laughs> So I think my initial worry about our classifier is actually founded. Um, so I mentioned, move the mic a little bit. So I mentioned a while ago that I was worried that our, uh, that our original classifier had uh, a problem where I was mismatching the, um, uh, so the, the, the data as it was sent to me, let me, let me rewind. So the data as it was sent to me, I have the information about where the people are from, and then each question is its own, uh, so these are respondents, so this is the training data for the classifier. Each question is its own column, and in each column, um, I have just the number of the response that the person gave. And I assumed that those responses and those numbers uh, correlated to the order of the responses in the multiple choice quiz as it was presented in its um, sort of, I don't know what I would call it, um, as it was presented in the archival version of the New York Times dialect quiz. I no longer think that's the case because, especially given my usage patterns, there is no way that I should be placed in uh, the Upper Midlands, um, which is where those, well, I mean, New York isn't, but, um, so that's a problem. And we're gonna need to figure out how to fix it. And I'm not entirely sure how, but, excuse me. Okay, so, but, excuse me. Um, Well, the mystery was solved, so that's a good thing. Uh, Abin says, what's the highest probability? So it will be the first one that is uh, responded. So this is the most likely, the second most likely, the third most likely. Um, yeah, I, I don't sound like I'm from Milwaukee. <laughs> uh, nothing against Milwaukee. Uh, it is apparently a perfectly lovely city. Um, I've got family in Cleveland and I don't sound like them. So that's a, that's a thing. 
And I for sure do not sound like I'm from Brooklyn. Uh, again, nothing against Brooklyn. It's just, I, I, don't, I don't think anyone would mistake me for a New Yorker if they were familiar with, um, with New Yorkers. So, uh, Ahmed says, uh, sorry, I was like, oh, no worries. Let's take a turn, because I don't necessarily want to like get my new environment set up. Um, so doing the classifying in a different directory, um, uh, sort of separately again, because I don't have uh, permission to share the data. So instead, let's, uh, let's add a test because right now we don't have any tests, I don't believe. Nope, those are all for the, what? Why do I have a second models folder? I should only have one. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's one level higher above. Gotcha. Um, so, okay, here's all the models for the uh, uh, for the assistant that I've trained over time. Uh, all right, here is the test. So, let's add happy path. That's fine. No quiz. That's fine fine. Um, I don't know how to do tests with a form in Raza, so let's see if I can figure that out, because I think that'll be a good use of our time. And then um, next week we can go back and spend some time unmessing up the classifier, because it's something's wrong. Something's very wrong, and I don't know what it is. So... I, I mean, I have a very strong suspicion of what it is. Uh, Raza forms test. All right, let's let's go to the docs. Who doesn't love a good documentation page? Uh, da, 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 validating conditional slot logic. Mm -hmm. You need to collect a lot of pieces of information. This is called slot filling. Slots are the um, you know, basically like a fill in the blank, the blank would be the slot, um, except you'd know, I don't know if you ever played Mad Libs and it'll be like a make of car and you're, you ask someone for the make of car and hope that they don't tell you something ridiculous. And if they do tell you something ridiculous, you catch it with data validation. Okay. Um, blah, 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 single action, which contains logic to loop over the required slots and ask the user for this information. Um, example form. When you find a form, you need to add it to your domain file. Check, check, check. So our form is up and running. Uh, I'm really just interested in how to do the testing because I haven't done testing for a form before. Uh, you also need to include the form policy. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, you can describe all of the happy paths as a single story. Yes. Uh, excellent. On the happy path, will users cooperate well? Uh, all right. The form action will only request slots that haven't already been said. If the user starts a conversation with, I'd like a vegetarian Chinese restaurant for eight people, they won't ask about cuisine and number of people. Uh, your slots should be unfeaturized. We've, we've already done all of this in, in previous sessions, and you can go back and watch those if you're interested. Um, Okay, so this goes in your actions file to, let me zoom in a little bit, it's a little bit small. Uh, so this goes in your actions file to help you figure out what you need to do. Uh, once it gets called for the first time, blah, 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 blah. You get the next slot and required slots. You go through them in order and then you submit them. Custom slot mappings, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we are using the free text input here as well. Um, so our uh, approach is a little bit different. So people can put anything in and we won't be like, I'm sorry, that's not a correct answer. We'll just try to find what the correct answer is and match it to that. Validating user input, uh, which we are doing. So that's what the data validation is what's doing the um, the matching of the freeform input to the most likely multiple choice answer. 
Uh, do, do, do. You can also deactivate the form directly during the validation step. Uh, all right, we're not doing that. Unhappy path, chit chat. Uh, interactive learning with forms. And this is what, uh, interactive learning is what um, uh, Abhishek was talking about earlier. Da. Okay. Not what I'm looking for. Requested slot set. So how to set each of the slots. Okay, explanations. We might do these eventually, but that's gonna be a lot of writing uh, to explain why you would each ask each of the 19 dialect specific questions, uh, especially because they are different um, in each. The answers to each would be different. I'd need to write 19 little linguistics essays in like a sentence or two, and that would take some time. Although it would be really fun though. So maybe at some point we'll do that. Conditional slot logic. Uh, okay, we shouldn't really need to worry about that. Debugging, handline interface. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's, hmm. Let's search for tests, see if there's something there. All right, end-to-end -end testing. Uh, Rasa Open Source lets you test dialogues end-to-end -end by running through test conversations and making sure both the NLU and core make correct predictions. Um, and we are more interested in testing the um, actions here, but we should also test our, the, like the, the conversation part of the assistant. To do this, you need some stories in the end-to-end -end format, which include both the NLU output and the original text. Here are some examples. All right, so custom actions. Uh, the following events are omitted by my custom action. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, forms, here we go. Uh, excellent, so looking for a restaurant, inform, food, thank you, okay. All right, so what we need to go through, what we need to do is we need to go through and uh, create a full conversation using uh, our specific answers. So, and I believe this is actually uh, the example that we already have in our end-to-end -end test, but let's double check that. Pop you on over, boop da da boop da 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 All right, I don't think this will work, but let's find out. So let's stop our conversation. Let's stop our conversation using correct command. There we go. And now if we do Raza test, um, because we're not uh, specifying everything that our form needs, I think we're gonna run into some errors. Yeah, okay, so you can see uh, incorrect entity predictions. Um, Although it looks like we're doing a pretty good job in terms of correctly identifying the intent. Uh, all right, and then, ooh, uh, a very not quite so good um, job with the actions. And I think that's because we are not giving it the correct information to actually run the actions correctly. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and um, do a correct user uh, example here. So for the happy path, and that is not actually what we have, we are going to do the whole form. Greet, start quiz, that's correct. Uh, and then here on do, do, do. All right. Uh, 
here is where we're going to start the form, except ours is not called restaurant form. Uh, ours is called, I think, a licitation form. All right, and we're going to go through and fill in all of these slots, and that's definitely going to take the rest of the time. So, uh, but then we'll have a lovely test that we can run and make sure that everything is working correctly, as opposed to our test right now, which um, tests the NLU and dialogue management pretty good, but does not uh, do an especially good job testing the action because it doesn't have the information it needs to run the action. All right, so... Uh, What's the easiest way to do that? Hmm. Right, the first thing we need to do is we definitely need to do the correct form for the action, uh, which is gonna be, what's it called? I think it's called a licitation form, but I wanna make sure I do it correctly. Yeah, a licitation form. Hmm. So we're doing the elicitation form, it's called the elicitation form, still the elicitation form. Uh, and then, uh, hmm. Uh, also, we're gonna continue doing the elicitation form here, I believe. Uh, also, Afghan and cuisine are not things that exist in our current assistant. Um, and we also have data validation. So, did you mention data validation in here anywhere? Mm -hmm. Interactive learning testing. Oh, it got funky, probably because I'm so zoomed in. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Forms have to pass, forms don't have to pass. Um, mm -hmm. Dean form restaurant. Okay, so it doesn't, mm, so it doesn't really matter what the assistant Okay, so we don't need to specify the question that the assistant is asking. We just need to specify what response the user is giving and what slot that's filling. Because, well, I guess if you were just like super good at the quiz, no, you couldn't. Sorry, so what I'm thinking about is, so the form will only handle new slots. And if we had just like a big list of all our answers and we copied and pasted that. The form wouldn't handle it well because we don't actually have, we're not doing like full entity extraction on each of the questions. What we're doing is we're taking in the free form input and then doing data validation to match it to the nearest answer. So we don't have to have um, a lot of training examples for every single one of our form every single one of our possible multiple choice answers. Uh, so, okay, so here's what the assistant is saying. The person says food and the, okay, so I think we just need to have like this bit here repeated, and I think that will work for our test. Um, uh, Dipanchu says, how do you spend your quarantine days? I'm working. <laughs> I work from home, so it's sort of the same for me, um, except I can't, you know, go out and do stuff. Uh, what are the essential advanced concepts one should know, and what kind of resources do you suggest in CV and NLP? I, I will say, I'm not, I'm not a computer vision person. Um, I, I don't know that I can really give you good advice there. Um, uh, in NLP, hmm, what would I recommend? Like specific concepts. Hmm. Maybe a lot of lexical frequency stuff. Uh, I feel like that's less commonly taught these days and it's an important part of NLP and a lot of tools like work the way they do because of the way that lexical frequency works. Um, so if you're not familiar with like Ziff's law, that's a good thing to read up on. 
Mmm, coffee. Okay, so I think I've answered my question about how we're going to write this test, and now we just need to write write it and see how it do. Um, no, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Why is it going to work? Because here we're looking for... Uh, So the matching to the slot does not happen in the NLU pipeline. The matching to the slot happens in the actions, because I've done something a little bit funky because I want to be very flexible and I don't want to re-ask people questions, basically. It might work. It might work. Hmm. And you didn't ask, going back to the, the question here. Okay. Four. And they don't utter for the forms, right? It just, the form happens. Hmm. Custom actions are not executed as part of end-to-end test. If your custom actions append any events to the tracker, it has to be reflected in your end-to-end -end tasks, e.g. by adding slot events to your end-to-end -end story. Okay. All right, okay, so we are going to have to basically do the beta validation ourselves, basically. Ugh, all right, um, because it's not running the custom actions. Which means, is this test going to actually be helpful for us? So the tests don't run the action server. That's the thing that we're most interested in testing. So... The problem with not running the action server is that we're actually mapping the info to the slot in the actions. So we might as well do that in our test just to make sure that it is working, um, even though that's not the bit that I'm most worried about. So Um, <laughs> all right, and then we are going to eventually do that, but in the meantime, we're going to do this a bunch, right? Yeah, okay, so here's where... No, 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 and then here, this will be set to null. So this section here is saying, okay, now we've ended the form, and then we say what the slot values are. Um, just give us an extra space there. Here we're saying, hey, ask me a question with the form. Here's the slot value. Well, hmm. <laughs> uh, would it make more sense just to set all the slot values in one go? using maybe our responses from earlier? Or do we actually want to go through this conversation? Hmm. Let's, hmm, let's, let's try setting all the slot values at once and then we can split them apart later if we need to. Uh, there we go. Um, for form null slot values. Yeah. Uh, so I think what we're going to do is that, uh, uh, Dipanchu says, what are some of the limitations you found in Raza? What are some open source alternatives to Raza NLU? Uh, well, I, Raza is open source. <laughs> um, if you're looking for other open source stuff um 
I don't know anything off the top of my head. There may be other options. Uh, I think right now probably the biggest limitation to Raza is a lot of the pre-trained stuff that we have um, for like pre-trained embeddings and stuff is more focused on high resource languages, um, like English, for instance. Um, but also that's true of pretty much all NLP tools. Uh, and because we are open source, um, if, you know, someone does build something for a different language, they can, uh, make a pull request and, and add it. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's my answer to your question, hopefully. A little bit more coffee. Um, yeah, okay, so let's just let all our thoughts. Uh, let's see. Do I have just like an easy way of doing this? All right, let's use this as our little uh, list of things to do. So, except we don't want to copy the white space because then we're going to get that every time. So, and we should have 19. Watch me miscount these again. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, I want to do three at a time. Could I script this? Yes. Would it be faster? Well, probably not. Let me put it this, this way. It probably wouldn't be faster for me, especially since I have to go through and add uh, values for all of these. So, pill bug. And I say these to the right. Uh, rain, sun. Go back down to my. Da, da, da. I have no term of expression for this. All right. Uh, for crawfish, I say crawfish. All right, next three. Oh, I didn't cut these ones. Uh, Halloween sandwich and side road. I know what the answer is for side road. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, it's good that we're doing testing today. I've been meaning to for a while and I just have not gotten around to it. All right, so for side road, it's definitely space, A-C-C-E-S-S, -S, road. That pesky space that ruined my life and I am gonna eventually have to go back and fix somewhere, uh, somehow, in all of the, the places where it is. Um, mm -hmm. I have no word for this is the one for Halloween. I guess I could just put other because all of them have an other option. And then sandwich, I think I just say sub, and I think that's an action, that's an option as well. Yes, yeah, sub, excellent. Awesome, and then the next one, shoes, highway, yard sale. <sighs> so right now we are pretending that the way that our, uh, uh, assistant works is that we um, launch the form and then everybody just like spits out all the answers at once. This one is highway and this one is yard sale. Get in there. And after this, uh, hopefully we will get more interpretable results for our, our tests. Oof. Uh, 
uh, rhymes with boy. All right, kitty corner. And I believe it's kitty corner with a dash in our data validation. Uh, and it's important that we have it spelled the same and whatnot because otherwise the label encoder can't handle it. Uh, Smithy says, hey Rachel, can you give insights on making uh, Rosa Chatbot self-learn or provide self-care transaction functionality? Um, I'm new to your live session. If you've already made a suggestion, you can suggest it to me. Self-learn. Like reinforcement learning? Um, if, you're, if you're asking about reinforcement learning, I would say in general, you probably want to avoid that for conversational systems just because the sort of finding in the field has been if you have like two assistants talking to each other and you use that as training data, you get weird, unusable results. Um, what you can do is uh, data augmentation for your intents, um, doing things like paraphrasing. And I think we have, uh, if it's not already out, there will be something out in the medium near future uh, to help with that. So to answer your question, make it a little bit easier, but uh, I would not, uh, I probably wouldn't recommend trying to do a completely, you know, reinforcement learning uh, approach. Uh, again, just because the, the literature to date suggests that it does not work good. All right. Take these. Firefly. Verge. Brew through uh, water fountain. All right. Uh, Sal, mm, I'm definitely gonna say that wrong. Sal, I'm just gonna. Sorry about that. Uh, says hello. Help me. How can I run Raza open source on cPanel? I don't know what cPanel is. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Yeah, if you have specific questions, I think I'd probably recommend the, the Raza forum. Uh, which is at Raza. Sorry, forum.raza.com. This one. Uh, oh, and here is the, the paraphrasing I mentioned. Um, so yeah, it's out. You can you can give that a shot and see if that'll help. Um, so it's sort of like it's a little bit self-teaching. Um, Uh, so if you have a specific question, this is a, a better place to ask it because uh, I'm I do not know what cPanel is, for example, uh, and someone is much more likely to on the forum. Um, and B, I I don't have 100% brain right now. All right, let's try. Nope. All right. All right, let's run this test again. See how we do. Uh, and I'm not super worried about entities here because uh, we are not um, we're not really using entities in the traditional way for um, slot filling for our uh, quiz part, if that makes sense. All right. Did this make a difference? So if we look here, this is the one. Uh, so this is pretty much 100% wrong, the NLU test originally, and now it is not 100% wrong. Interesting. Uh, so what's funky about this? Traditionally homework one score. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. So thank you, we're doing really good with listening. So this is just sort of like waiting for the, um, the user to respond seems to be okay. Denies good, greet, affirm. Okay. Actually looks to be not super bad. Um, with the problem of deny. So we're having a hard time figuring out when people are saying no, it looks like. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Classification report for CR for an entity extractor. Uh, and I'm not super concerned about the entity extraction 
here at this stage of the assistant again because most of um, what you sort of normally do for entity extraction we are instead doing in a little bit of a funky way with um, with fuzzy matching uh, uh, Nell says I would look into installing pip and cpanel and work from there good suggestion again I'm I, I don't know what cpanel is I'll look it up um, okay I think I'm gonna call it here um, Friday is gonna be not the most fun, probably. Uh, I'm gonna go through and we're gonna fix our classifier. We're gonna spend some more time on it. We're gonna figure out what's going on. Um, and I'm gonna try and fix the, the problem. Actually, I think I'm also gonna um, email uh, the person I got the data from originally and ask if there's a, a key <laughs> that might be a little bit more helpful and um, just double check that they didn't send it to me and I ignored it for some reason. So yeah. Uh, that'll be Friday. It'll be trying to fix this gosh darn model. But good news, it does work. It goes all the way through, um, which is fantastic. And when we're retraining the model, we can also um, spend some time fixing the leading white space issue uh, that we have with the, specifically the access road question. So we will handle that then. Um, but we're in a pretty good place. Once we have the model fixed, I think we're ready to move on to uh, working in Raza X instead. So, so far we've been working with Raza Open Source, um, which is just the, the library that handles the creation of the assistant. Uh, Raza X is a um, free piece of software that uh, helps you iterate over your assistant and improve it over time. Um, and once I have a Raza X server instance up and running, um, once the classifier is fixed. So this is a couple steps in the future. Uh, I might, I might uh, share that uh, uh, information as well so you can um, give it a shot, see how the assistant works for you. Uh, probably not this week though, because <laughs> again, I need to fix the classifier so that the, it give good answer and not a bad answer. And I don't know how long that's gonna take, but we'll find out. All right, thank you for joining me today, everyone. Um, we fixed the bug, which is fantastic. It was a frustrating bug, which is less fantastic. We're gonna have to get to the root cause of that in a little bit. Uh, but we did do the thing that I said I was gonna do faster than I thought I was gonna do it. I didn't have to retrain the encoder, which is good. Um, we are going to at some point, but not a huge problem. And we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. All right, thanks for joining me today, everybody. I hope this was entertaining or helpful, and I will see you on Friday. I'll talk to you then. Bye.